I'm not going to pay the you. You, you put that. See, see, you know what you say. Wait, wait, hold up. That's not what you say. Because your pastor has done it. I, I, I have done it. As much as I study the word, and I'm looking down, I'm like, I don't understand how this happened. How you know, is my enemy at this moment to be an example to the woman that you have done, and I serve you? Been there, been there. And I've been there. And so we, we, we look at the book of Daniel. And he's writing to this audience who's questioning now. The sovereignty are in other words, there's Nebuchadnezzar and watch this. And these false gods who are they more powerful than the one true God? Watch this. Maybe you've never been on the job and you know you should have gotten a promotion. You've been signing God, you've been sowing your seed. But you see that he didn't get promoted. And you're looking at God, wait a minute, God, I've done everything right. Wait a minute, I don't say how I didn't get the promotion. Why? Look at the 
And sometimes, sometimes when you get involved, all of you are never felt it, but I have. I, I knew I made some poor decisions. And I wish I could have taken it back. And he was talking to me. And smoothie. And so I couldn't feel his presence. And I was like, oh Lord, I, I can't live this way, God. What do I have to do to get back in right standing with you? Is this evil going to have victory over me? Or are you going to deliver me, Father? For I'm absolutely dependent on you. Amen. Watch this, watch this. So, 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 so then. When we look at our liberated genre, that's the text that we're dealing with. You can't read the book of Daniel like the Gospels. You can't read the book of Daniel like the Epistles because it is an apostolic, or not apostolic, apocalyptic prophecy. Amen? It's an apocalyptic, watch this, apocalyptic. Right? So we have this one, apocalypse, not apocalyptic. It's that adjective of the noun which comes from the Greek word apocalypsis, which only means to unveil a revelation. Mm. Amen. And so that's where you got the book of revelation. Right, right, right. But watch this. There are a lot of people who are afraid of the book of revelation. But watch this. Let me get this correct. It's not the apocalypsis of Eon or the apocalypse of John. It's actually the apocalypse, apocalypse of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that God Himself is trying to unveil something that's going to happen at the end time to unveil to us that, watch this, that now God has the victory over evil. That God is the one that has the final say so in your life. Right? Hallelujah. So, no matter what you're going through on this faith journey, even when you can't see it, that's why it's called faith. Faith, now, faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things unseen. So whatever you're going through, you're doing your life, whether it's relational, spiritual, or financial, and you can't see, well, God is trying to unveil this apocalyptic prophecy that he's spoken over your life since the day you were conceived, that he has the final say so, and he's testing you, he's challenging you to see if you're going to take him at his word. A fire proof faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so when we go through this faith journey, watch this. And you're put in the fire furnace of faith. The question is, are you going to come through? Or will you be consumed? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this now. Watch this. My, my, my little daughter, Kayla, asked me a question yesterday. She said her and Sean had been seen bring beers. She said, we just saw one here. Which one is that, son? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, don't be coming. It ain't have nothing to do with the field, but fire. It's a metaphor for judgment. But it's also a metaphor of life, of revelation. And so the context of your life will determine what type of signal that God is giving you when you saw these fiery these vehicles on fire, and if you felt the Holy Spirit prompting you, then you have to now begin to examine your life to understand is this judgment or is God trying to change? Amen. Amen. A fire proof faith. Amen. So when we look at this particular prophet book, yes. which now we're dealing with what is called a court narrative. So when you talk about a narrative, you're going to have five points of the narrative. Watch this. There's a beginning or a setting where it identifies a location or a place. Then it identifies the characters in the story. And then it's going to let you know who is the hero of the story. And it's going to reveal the villain of the story. There's going to be a conflict, which is the second level, where the conflict or the tension in the story is unveiled. But at the end of the conflict, there's a turning point. We call it a climax. It's a turning point. It's the top of the pyramid. And then what happens after you reach the climax, where the revelation comes, there are unfolding events that lead to a conclusion. Watch me now. So this is a familiar story about Meshach, Shadrach, 
and a bad Negro <laughs> who were in a position in Babylon who were exiled. You familiar with the story? Because it's a song we teach in Sunday school. And so the child story is distorted. In the next few minutes, is how does your story <laughs> line up with their story? And so then as we get to the end, will you get the conclusion of the matter about the story of your life and where you are? Amen, amen, amen. So we get here at chapter 3, verses 1. We find that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has made an image of gold. Now this is prompted by the fact that chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar has, the, has a dream and no one can interpret the dream. And so he summons all his wise men, his physician, his soothsayers, and he says, you need to interpret my dream for me now and tell me his interpretation. Yes. And so the uh, wise men, the magician, and, and all the others say, well, Lord, can you tell us the dream? He says, no. If I tell you the dream, you'll be able to manipulate the dream and just tell me what I want to hear. And he says, they say, well, that's no a lie, but the gods who can do this, what you're asking, why can that? Because see, sometimes we have dreams. I don't know about you, but I had dreams. And I'm trying to interpret the dream like, what do these dreams mean? And, and, and sometimes God is trying to show you something in the dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speak. Watch this. And so what happens is we go to man trying to get man to interpret something only God can interpret to you. Watch me now. What's the difference between us and Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar did not have the Holy Spirit down inside of him. But we have the Holy Ghost down inside of us. And so when you have dreams that God is trying to show you a vision, God is trying to prompt you to go somewhere. And then you start talking about your dreams like Joseph. Then you start getting persecuted by your brother. You have to learn how to rest and trust in God. Because nobody can understand your dream but the God who gets it. That's right. Oh, yeah, That's right. Right. Play with me. Because when we deal with our children, the children should be seeing visions and dreaming dreams. And these dreams come from when the mamas and the dads we plant the seed of the word down inside of them. And so when they begin to have dreams and they can't understand it, that's when we have to point them to be a director prophetically and point them and say, go to God, baby. Go to God. And God is going to unveil to you what your dream means. In other words, this is what we can teach our children. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Nebuchadnezzar was afraid because he had this dream and he knew it was just not an ordinary dream. He was afraid of being ignorant and not knowing what the dream meant. And so he was so fired up, he says, look, if you don't be able to tell me what's going on with me and give me the interpretation of my dream, I'm going to kill every wise man in Babylon. And so, he was so happy because of the dream and not knowing what it meant that he already sent the decree to execute all the wise men. And so when it came to Daniel, Daniel said, hold up, wait a minute. Why is the king ready to kill everybody, including me? I'm paraphrasing. And he says, wait a minute, look, look. Give me some time. He told the Lord, give me some time. And let, let me go to my God and let me call him and he will give me this mystery to the king's dream. Watch me now. Because I'm talking about fireproof faith. Watch me now. And so understand when you have dreams and visions. Yes, watch me now. It's a mystery because you don't know. But a mystery, which the Greek word is mysterion, means something kept secret that means to be revealed. Oh, God, help me today. And so God is the God of the mystery because the mystery evolved or originated in Him. And so therefore you have to go to God. Oh, yes, Lord, help me today. You have to go to God. 